Hi, Chase. How are you? I'm well, Arnie. How are you? Good, good. So we're, we're talking about what it's like to be at uh, UW Bothell in these times. That's right. That's right. Uh, it is interesting. Um, <laughs> I have to say, let's see, um, you're a professor and I'm a student there. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we get to talk a little bit about the different perspectives that uh, we don't cool. always get to see the other side. Yeah, what, what, what did it feel like to you back at the beginning? Um, to me, I think it felt, I think the student body, or at least the people that I was surrounded by, well, there was kind of an inclination, there was a kind of a feeling that, uh, or a wariness that the campus might be shut down like yeah. a couple of weeks before it happened. Um, and yeah. people were talking, there were rumors going around. Um, and there was kind of an anxiety, but also um, kind of an energy of, of nervous excitement too, of like, well, what's going to happen? We, there, was, there was a lot of uncertainty flying around. So um, I... It was like in the middle of the quarter too. I mean, so you had already yeah. started. The yeah. Yeah. By that time where the rumors first started and there was first concern, yeah, we we're about halfway through winter quarter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, once it, so yeah, there there wasn't a, a lot of fear. I don't. I think all of us were just expecting. Well, maybe the last week of quarter would be online, and we all be back for spring quarter. I think yeah. that was the general feeling. Yeah. 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 As faculty, we kind of had the same thing. Um, we had there were hints and we were getting notes from, you know, Seattle uh, and, and the senior people uh, that this was being discussed and a plan was being figured out. And, you know, yeah. not before you heard, we heard this was gonna happen, everything was gonna be shut down. We needed to figure out how to convert all of our courses immediately. Yeah. And that, that among the faculty that caused a fair amount of panic. I'm sure it did. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, everything was designed, all those, you know, the tools, canvas and everything are set up for the way we were going to do the course. It was about mm -hmm. time. And um, you know, they they the university tried to do what they could do at a high level, and they said, well whatever you need, you can have it if you can get it and put it into place, but it's kind of up to you, you know? Yeah. And so then we were all trying to brainstorm and figure things out. And, you know, there was, gee, how will tests run? And, you know, there was sort of these waves of anxiety and then people were really trying to deal with classes and some were very tech phobic, you know, faculty professors are very, uh, habit oriented they sort of mm. they've always done and so some didn't change really easily and you know and then the 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 new younger faculty tenure track would go well what does this mean for tenure what if the students hate it you know are they gonna all rate me bad and then that's not going to mean that i'm not going to be promoted. and so yeah yeah i think that was from the perspective of the students, uh, the fact that it was, I mean, an emergency um, was pretty apparent. I mean, there was, I could feel uh, a general sense of scrambling uh, by the professor because it was uh, in, in winter quarter, it was the last week um, that uh, it was shut down. So I, I had a public speaking class. So our final public speaking uh, speech was given over Zoom, which was Zoom was a fresh thing at the time, yeah. and it was a complete. I mean, I mean, it was it wasn't that bad, but it was just clear that no one was familiar with the technology yet, and uh, half the people weren't even there, and it was uh, there was just, there was a lot of stress. I mean, I could even tell by the on the, the professor's face that like she was not having a good time. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we the the faculty heading into spring at least the environment I was in we were all getting together and sharing you know what was working what was not working and how were we experiencing it and you know just like 
you felt it was kind of harder to stay up and keep up and it felt heavier, you know, even though almost, you know, when I started the same assignments were going out, I knew I could feel and I got feedback was harder for the students. They felt like the load was just heavier and the faculty felt like the load was heavier. Mm -hmm. And we were having to, you know, get over Zoom and, and just have social hours among ourselves. And it wasn't the same as when we got together. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it just, it, there was, the, there had, in fact, there still is this load on there. And the, and the classes I teach are like you. I came out of retirement. I've been in industry for a long time and had retired. And, but then I wanted to give back. And that giving back was so I could work with students and share and they could ask questions and it was spontaneous and I could look them in the eye. And when I, when I, when I lecture, you know, I wander around and I wave my arms and I look them in the eye. It's just like a late night talk show host, you know, with nobody laughing back. You know, if I don't have eyes and I can't see whether I'm connecting with people and have to change the way I pace or what I say, it's really, really hard. And then the classes, I always have teams and they're working on whiteboards and they, I know that's the most enjoyable thing that they want to do and you couldn't do it. And so... Yeah. yeah, I think specifically what you were mentioning about the Zoom, it was more difficult meeting up. I, I've had a lot of conversations around that with with peers and friends um, that there is something draining about being on Zoom. Uh, it's something that it's, uh, whether the, the posture or the conversation has to be more stilted, um, there's not that kind of refreshing uh, upward spiral psychologically. There, there is something physically exhausting of, of yeah. interacting over Zoom that's draining. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is something that there's so many uh, micro interactions in a classroom that uh, provide cumulatively significant positive psychological benefits. Um, whereas sitting alone in your house has nothing but the work. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I think that was, I think that's the reason why I prefer and, and need uh, uh, the, the, the physical. Yeah. Uh, yeah because it, it counteracts the yeah, and does it, negativity. I mean, I, my speculation also was, you know, the other thing that was missing in not being together is your friends being around and, you know, the relaxation that sort of gives you energy back when you're not studying. I mean, so, you know, it seems like education is sort of concentrating, but you need a break for it to settle in and to make sense mm -hmm. of it. And the people are the break. Did, did yeah. you have techniques that you have used to try and stay connected to people? Um, I, when the lockdown was at its worst, yeah, we had uh, weekly zoom meetings, yeah. cocktail hour. Um, yeah. we did that. Um, I established weekly routines with some other friends for texting or phone calls. Um, and then as things have slowly gotten a little bit more lenient, I, I've started going like the rock climbing gyms are, are open. Um, some somewhat so uh, I've been doing that again but uh, I took spring quarter and then summer off and I I enrolled in fall quarter this quarter and uh -huh. uh, actually uh, went through the first week and then decided not so I decided to drop uh -huh. the classes for fall quarter um, because of everything we we're talking about um, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't found a way to significantly make online courses, uh, manageable for myself. I think I can, I think I can only do one online class at a time. I had signed up for two, um, but I, I don't think I can do more than one. Yeah. 